I think to understand the upfront today, you actually have to flash back to March of 2020 when the entire industry was dealing with a lot of uncertainty um, with the pandemic. So for Fox, we had to figure out in two months time, how are we going to present our new programming, our new ad products, the, the power of the, of the Fox portfolio uh, to our clients who weren't going to be uh, in New York and, and how could you make it impactful and what technology was out there and what resources and tools did we have uh, to really bring the power of Fox uh, to our clients. Then I think the second part for our clients, they were figuring out how they were going to rethink their business overall. And I think at the end of the day, when they were thinking about the upfront, they fell into three groups. The you know, first group were clients that just couldn't participate in the upfront because their businesses were dramatically affected by the pandemic. Think your QSRs, think your movies. Um, then you had a second group that actually had products that would do a lot of good for people during the pandemic. And they definitely want to participate in the upfront, think your technologies and your CPGs. Then you had a third group. Uh, they wanted to maybe help, hold on to some flexibility. So they did one of two things. They either participated in the upfront, maybe not to the same level they have in the past and held a little bit of those budgets back, or they held all of their budgets back and thought, as things develop and as things change, I'll come in and, and go after some very, very targeted media. Now, with all of that, there, there wasn't a right or wrong answer among any of them, but I think what was great for both Fox, our competitors, as well as all of our clients and our agencies was that we learned a lot in a year's time. So now you flash forward to the 2020 up, one upfront that we just went through, we saw a big influx of clients come back into the upfront and some clients now test the upfront, which I think taught us a couple of things. One, there's, there's still the need for a futures market. I think we were talking about the demise of the upfront for, for quite some time. And, and in reality, what the last year and a half taught us was that not that we needed to get away from the upfront, but that the upfront needed to evolve. And I think the second thing we found was that this, notion that the upfront is just a linear television event is completely, completely wrong. Um, case in point for Tubi, we nearly tripled our revenue year over year in the upfront for Tubi. And we almost doubled our, our clients year to year. We also saw increases in our programmatic business. We saw increases in our addressable business. And we also launched products like our One Fox digital product. So the upfront is evolving. It's changing in a good way. It is certainly not, not going away anytime soon. And I, and I would say that the, what the last year has taught us is that the upfront's only getting better. And how is programmatic, uh, the, the programmatic marketplace evolving? Uh, what do you see happening there? So I think there's two things to understand with the programmatic marketplace. The first one is that it's really big. The last I checked, it is a $200 billion global marketplace. And I think the second piece is that it's really robust. And, and the reason for that is really CTV. CTV has been the accelerant in the programmatic marketplace, and that's really caused it to take off. And in fact, 80% of US CTV households can get programmatic advertising uh, delivered to them. So we understand that programmatic is becoming a much bigger part of what we do, and certainly our, our clients' media mix. And we understand it's, it's good for both buyers and sellers, and we understand why. For buyers, um, it certainly gives them efficiencies in their workflows. It gives them dashboards that allow them to look at their spending and make sure that that spending is hitting their intended targets. Uh, I think for Fox and, and, and our media companies, and this really speaks to the role of, of SSPs, you know, it allows us to practice some really good yield management, you know, serving the right impression to the right brand um, at the right time also allows us to manage our manage demand and manage our inventory. So it makes us a lot smarter. And all of that is done in a split second. So it makes us faster, which is really something we, we want to uh, continue to do. So um, we continue to see programmatic as a huge part of what we're doing moving forward. Um, it's certainly a very large part of our, our 2B business and, um, and certainly our news business, but um, programmatic will continue to be a driving force for Fox. Oh, that's interesting. 
so now um, we see the market evolving with metrics and data points. It used to be, you know, a big focus uh, in linear TV with age and gender. Now you have greater ability to target more or granularly uh, and based on other kinds of criteria. And how do you, how do you see uh, these data points evolving and, uh, and changing? So data is certainly a trend we deal with on a daily basis. And I, and I think we look at data and data solutions um, with two priorities. The, the first priority is, is the data set or the data solution trustworthy and is it one that our clients deem trustworthy we are a client-centric sales organization if our clients have an issue then you know that is a solution that we, you know we have to take into account i think the second piece is and what we try to keep in mind at fox is that our portfolio is very different than our competitors and, and that's important to know you know we are in the live big event business. So, so data and data solutions that may work for our larger competitors may not necessarily work for us. So we need to keep those two things in mind when we're looking at data and data solutions. Now, I know there's a lot certainly going on in our industry in terms of measurement right now with what's going on with Nielsen, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to, to get into that here. But I think what the underlying issue is, is that we've seen some unprecedented fragmentation of audiences across um, the entire media landscape. And, and not only are those people going to CTV, they're going to mobile, and on top of that, they're going to social, and within social, they're going to TikTok. Um, they're going to a lot of places, and they're going to a lot of places fast. And there's data that we know is out there and that we need to capture. So it's really important to us and Fox is always gonna be an advocate of ways that we're gonna be able to measure audience across all platforms. Um, and I think that Fox as well as the industry has taken some steps, important steps to do that. I think one example I would use is OpenID, which um, gives all open AP members uh, access to buying linear and addressable TV. Uh, we've taken steps with our one Fox platform, which allows us to um, bring all of our digital point touch points to our clients at scale. And we also launched our Fox Next uh, program, which has some really forward looking uh, cutting edge data capabilities. So at the end of the day, you know, age and gender is still certainly a piece of things, but I think right now it's capturing our audience, finding them no matter where they are, aggregating them and then kind of putting it all back together. Um, so age and gender is still a piece of it, but now it's layering in um, all the data. And finally, uh, is there anything uh, new or interesting that you have uh, talked about that's upcoming uh, that you're excited about uh, that uh, you, you wanna tell media buyers and marketers about? I think that the thing we're most excited about here at Fox is our new ABOD platform, Tubi. We've had so much success um, early on. And I think that as we look at this and as we fold it into the Fox family, um, we're just seeing that it's giving us such a, a different dimension and, and such a, uh, a great way to reach more and more people and audiences that we haven't had access to the past. And I think that we're slowly seeing the marriage between Fox programming and Tubi programming. And really the power of that is um, going to really push us forward. And I think, you know, Tubi is going to be an integral part of our one Fox platform, which is allowing us to bring all of our digital touch points to our clients. And it's really going to allow us to move into that more audience-based selling, which I think is something that we've been looking forward to for, for quite some time. And now that we have to be in the fold, it's really gonna give us um, the wherewithal to do that.